Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and get ready for another action-packed, stunt-filled episode of The Range Rider, starring Jock Mahoney and Dickie Jones. This show was a classic television show at the beginning of television, and it is made for the kids to watch. It's a wonderful television show. And it's all brought to you free here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family-friendly Western television shows and movies. These two are just amazing horsemen, amazing stuntmen. They did all their own stunts. They did all their own horse work. These guys are just simply amazing to watch. Appreciate you coming by here. Have fun watching this, and we'll see you after the show. And who could be more at home on the range than... The Range Rider, with his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences, rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours. And Dick West, All-American Boy. to help you. Help me? A girl out here chasing murder and bandits? Well, you're liable to get your fool head shut off. I can take care of myself. Looks like nobody can take care of nothing around here, including myself. I'm just about to give up. No luck at all, huh? I haven't seen a thing of them varmints. Truth. There's two of them. Don't make no difference. They're strangers and they look suspicious to me. What are you going to do? I'm going to drag on some. You stay back. But, Dad, you'll only get into trouble again. Stay where you are and reach. A woman. A woman that can shoot, mister. Drop your guns and put up your hands. Never argue with a lady, Dick, especially when she's got the drop on you. We'll put ours away, ma'am. Hey, Dad! I've got them! You've got us, but why? You couldn't be on your way to hold up the freight wagon, could you? What freight wagon? Keep your hands up, you two! Ruth, you had not have done this. Why not? It worked. It might not have. And you always disarm a man after you catch him. Ryder? Let him have it, Dick. Looks like he's the sheriff, and the lady still has a beat on us. Well, I ain't rightly the sheriff, but I'm in charge while he's sick. Now, mister, give me your pistol. And anyhow, what business is it of yours? We don't mind being arrested, we just want to know what for. They don't look like outlaws to me, Dad. Well, we're not. Well, we'll see about that. I'm herding them into town, Ruth. You ride over and tell Bert it's safe to bring the wagon through. I hope you're right. Now head for Crooked Fork. But, but that's out of our way. It was out of your way, Sonny. Get going. When that girl gets out of there, we can go. Come on. 
Shut her up, boys. Let's do a good job on that outfit today. <laughs> your trouble, Sheriff. You're loose, like you. It's the rest of your game. Now listen, Sheriff. They must be attacking Bert. I know we caught the wrong man. Give us our guns and we'll help you. Dad, I believe. Come on. I sure guess I made another serious mistake, boys. Started right after Sheriff Cox got sick and I took over. Well, I have to agree. Somebody's out to get you, Sheriff. Stop calling me Sheriff. I'm sick of looking at this bag. Okay, then I'll just call you cheerful. But I still agree. Somebody's out to get you and the line. Is the freighting from this town profitable? Profitable? We're lucky if we make expenses. Well, then there's got to be some other reason. We're representing the citizens of Crooked Fork, Cheerful, and we want to talk to you. Well, talk ahead. Even if I do know what you're going to say. As long as you're a temporary sheriff, the town wants action against these outlaws. Well, I took action today when I caught the wrong ones. I want you to meet the range right in. Nick West, this is Wynn Cooper. How are you, sir? Cheerful made a little mistake today. We just tried to help him out. Cheerful makes too many mistakes, and they're not little. What do you want, Cooper? We want Cheerful to resign as deputy in charge, for one thing. Now, just a minute, Cooper. All I need is a little more cooperation from the town folks. You'll never get it. Nobody has any confidence in you. All right. I'll show you. I'll deputize the range rider and Dick here. Well, thanks, Cheerful, but I don't think the people would appreciate you deputizing a couple of strangers that you don't know anything about. No hard feelings, Ryder, but I think that's the way the folks at Crooked Fork would feel. I don't care if you all leave Dad in the lurch. I'm not going to let him resign. No, honey. Dad, don't you see? You couldn't hold your head up again. That's right. And I'll help you, Miss Ruth. I mean, Cheerful, even if the Range Rider won't. Okay, suit yourself. But the town is through with you and your freight line. From now on, nobody's shipping anything but your wagon. But you have to. No, we don't. I'm heading a committee to form a new line. We'll use my freight wagon, and we'll see that it gets plenty of protection. I don't understand why you couldn't give Cheerful's wagon the same protection. <laughs> You're a stranger here, Ryder. You haven't put up with years of his blunders. Missing schedules, forgetting things, misleading posses as a deputy. I guess that's, that's kind of true, Ryder. He's a failure. As a deputy and as a shipper. And we're not going to trust him when times are tough like this. So long.
you know, I don't like the looks of that Cooper. Is he a big bug here in town? Just about the biggest. He owns the store and the hotel. What reason might he have for wanting to get you out of the way? Me? No reason. He only deals in big profits. I don't know why you're so interested. You had a chance to help Dad and you wouldn't. I said I wouldn't be deputized. I didn't say I wouldn't stick around and help. Well, sure we will. And we'll get to the bottom of it, too. I mean, the writer will. It's no use making the trip, Dad. We haven't anything to carry. I still think Cooper's bluffing. You're wasting your time driving to Copper Springs. You mean you're going to put me out of business? It's your own fault. I'm just too doggone stubborn to stand for it. I'm going to drive to Copper Springs, too. And there's a load, I'm going to bring it back. Not if my wagon gets there first. And I'm sending the boys along to protect it. But, Dad... Don't worry about me, Ruth. I'll be the first one there and the first one back. Hello, up, Dad! Huh? I hate to do this, Ruth, but your father's had all the chances he deserves. He'll be all right, Ruth. Dick and I'll go along. Thanks, Ryder. We can't help him get to Copper Springs first, but we can take care of the outlaws if they show up. You think they won't? I have an idea they won't want to bother Cooper's wagon as much as they did Cheerful's. Cheerful's wagon today. What's the idea? Cheerful is practically out of business. What if he finds out what you're after? He won't. We're riding out now to meet that messenger I've been waiting for. Why are you keeping such a secret about this messenger? <laughs> I'm a businessman, Higby. I got a tip on how I can make some nice money. I never talk until the time is right. Get mounted. There's my messenger. Calvary? That's right. What do you want us to do, lock horns with the army? The army? <laughs> One soldier. I'll ride down and see if it's my man. If it is, I want you to get him out of the way for a while. Well... You're being well paid, Higby. The signal will be this. If I give it, ride down and grab him. The army won't know who to look for if you wear your masks. Howdy, Sergeant. Headed for Kirkwood Fork? That's where I'm going. My name is Cooper. I own the freight wagon line there. You do, eh? <laughs> That's funny. You're the man I'm looking for. Me? Well, in a way, the Army's setting up a cavalry post there, and we'll need a civilian contractor to haul supplies. Well, then I'm your man. As a matter of fact, we can sign the contract right here. That is, if you have it with you. Oh, I've got it with me, all right. Quartermaster sent me on with it. But I have to take it in for competitive bids, government regulations. I'm afraid you won't find much competition in a place like Crooked Fork. Well, I know that, but I got these stripes for obeying orders, whether they make sense or not. Sure. Well, I'm out here looking for a stray horse. I'll see you in town later. Okay, Cooper. We can make the deal then. You two stay here. We can handle it.
shots came from the hill. They ain't bothering us. Well, I'm looked though, Henry Ryder. You bet. Remember, cheerful, save your speed for the home stretch. <laughs> Got the contract I want. It's worth a fortune. Get him to the shack. Keep him there till I tell you to let him go. Let him go? Why don't you just take the contract? It's a government deal. It has to be done legitimately. I can't get it as long as Cheerful is still operating. But I'll fix that tonight. When we let the soldier go? After Cheerful's taken care of? Fresh tracks. One rider. Something interesting happened right here. For once, I beat you to it, Ryder. Look what I found. For a cartridge, good work. What caliber? 45. Guess I'm not so bad at this tracking after all. Now all you have to do is tell me who fired it. Well, you don't even know that. It was fired by a trooper from the United States Cavalry. Oh, now you're kidding me. I got second sight, didn't you know? Well, I found something, too. A brass button with cross sabers on it. And they're only worn on the uniforms of the United States Cavalry. Well, what do you suppose happened? Well, my second sight doesn't tell me that. But it's my guess that the man we were following was a trooper, and he jumped him right here. That gang? Come on, let's get on their trail. Well, they split and went two ways. We better check on Cheerful. He should be on his way back from Crooked Fork by now. Hey, look, Ryder. They're on their way home. Springs. The only reason I won coming home was because he got a load and I didn't. That sure is a button off a cavalry uniform. But what would a cavalry man be doing here? What does it mean? I don't know, but I'm sure interested in finding out. You know what? I bet Cooper knows something about it. I'll string along with Dick, cheerful. But if Cooper is behind this, we don't want to give him any warning. I'll ride him. I know that Cooper is money mad, but There's he... no money in the freight line. Well, if he wants it, I bet there's some money somewhere. Good evening. How are you, Ed? The boys tell me you heard some shooting and went for a look, Ryder. See anything? There wasn't anything on the range that we could find. But there was shooting, and it was probably the gang. And our sheriff wasn't on the job. I've got a right to make a living, haven't I? Our man picked up a load in Copper Springs today. How'd you do? You know. You don't have to rub it in. I didn't mean it that way, Ruth. I just want your father to know for his own sake that he's licked. For my own sake? Yes. I have a proposition to make you so that we can run the line and get the time behind it. Always listen to a proposition, cheerful. I'll buy your equipment. We'll operate both wagons. You will? Well, now, I'll give that some consideration. Dad! But cheerful! Wait a minute. 
Dick and I have been thinking about buying into your line ourselves, cheerful. Say, the writer and I could take care of those outlaws all right. Well, you would. Well, I'd make you a mighty handsome deal. You see, Cooper, Dick and I have been looking around for some place to invest a little money and settle down. Now, if it looks like a good proposition for you, why, should be for us. Well, it's not that. I'm just doing it to help the town out. Well, the town shouldn't mind if the writer owned it. No one's got anything against him. No, no, sure not. Why don't you take until morning to think it over, cheerful? That's the thing to do, Dad. Okay. Just as long as it's straightened out one way or the other, no hurry. So long. See you tomorrow. <coughs> First time I heard you say anything about settling down, Ryder. But didn't you mean what you said? You did, didn't you? Listen, folks, I'm playing for time. What I'm trying to do is worry Cooper into showing his hand. But you'll have your freight line with or without us. Come on, Dick. I don't care what the range rider said. I'm plumb discouraged. And I ain't going to make another trip to Copper Springs. But, Dad, you'll never do any more business. I don't care. I'm not going. George. Go tell Al to hook up the team. I'll drive to Copper Springs myself. Then right out and tell Higby to look out for the range rider and his friend. Find out who that is. contract for freighting, cheerful, but you can't get it unless you're still in business. Cooper just left for Copper Springs. And we're leaving, too. Come on.
Вчера. Well, I guess we're all set then, Sergeant. That's right, sir. Thanks to Ryder. And Dick, Sergeant, both of you. Oh, by the way, before we go, Sergeant, here's something that belongs to you. By the button off my uniform. Now, where'd you find that? Oh, that's a long story, Sergeant. Really hope you enjoyed The Range Riders starring Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones. And remember, it's brought to you free here on the internet by westernsontheweb.com. Hundreds of free, family friendly Western TV shows and movies. And also, I'd like to add this Dick Jones is in this. Dick Jones was all over Hollywood back in the heyday of Hollywood. He was in movies with James Stewart, with Errol Flynn, with Randolph Scott. John Wayne, Dick Jones was everywhere, all over the place when he was a boy in Hollywood. Thanks again. I'm Bob Terry. Appreciate you joining us. We hope to see you get on down the trail. Y'all have a great day. Howdy. I'm Bob Terry. And get ready for another action-packed, stunt-filled episode of The Range Rider, starring Jock Mahoney and Dickie Jones. This show was a classic television show at the beginning of television, and it is made for the kids to watch. It's a wonderful television show, and it's all brought to you free here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family-friendly Western television shows and movies. These two are just amazing horsemen, amazing stuntmen. They did all their own stunts. They did all their own horse work. These guys are just simply amazing to watch. Appreciate you coming by here. Have fun watching this, and we'll see you after the show. Home, home on the range, where the deer and the antelope play. And who could be more at home on the range than... The Range Rider, with his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours, and Dick West, All-American Boy. Here you see my saddle partner, Dick West, and myself heading toward Woodville. Our journey had a twofold purpose. One, to attend the wedding of our friend Harris Townley, editor of the Argus. Second, to help him track down a gang of rustlers. As we neared Woodville, I wondered which was uppermost in Townley's mind. Are we late? The ceremony's almost over. They should be out any minute now. Hi, right, anybody got any rice? Oh. So, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the government of this territory, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> well, now we have decided that. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, Harris, why so glum? I tell you, Dora, I've got all the figures right here. This story will blow the town of Woodville wide open. Oh. Harris, please, not now, Oh, dear. I'm sorry, Dora. Come on, come on, now. Let's, let's, let's get going. I want some of the wedding. Congratulations, Bob. I'm glad to see you finally caught it. Range Rider, Dick, I'm so glad you came. Well, don't I get to kiss the bride? Uh, wait a minute. I'm your husband, remember me? Oh. <laughs> okay, in the buckboard. I'll Thanks, try it. <laughs> Oh, 
Is it serious, Ryder? He's dead. Dead? You crazy guys! Firing off those guns like that, I might have known there'd be an accident. Right. There's no accident, Dick. It's murder. Murder? Murder? murder. Are you sure? Tell me. All these men were firing pistols. Mr. Towley was killed with a rifle. You mean someone wanted to make it look like an accident? That's right. I should close up shop. Is that right, Judge Barrett? Confound it, Dora. Don't put words in my mouth. But you can't expect to carry on the paper by yourself. What would your bank think of that, Mr. Shelton? After all, you hold a first mortgage on the Argus. The banner over in Palo City will pay you a good price for your paper and circulation. You all make it sound so logical for me to sell. Yet always in the back of my mind, there's a question. What would Harris want me to do? I think I can answer that for you, Mrs. Townley. He'd want you to do what's best and easiest for you. Sometimes the thing that's best isn't always the easiest. Forgetting that for the moment, you still can't run a paper without help. That's true. The life and death of the Argus can and won't be determined on the basis of help alone. This town needs a newspaper, gentlemen. Not just for news, but to keep its citizens working together, helping to build a better community. I'm going to continue to see that that need is fulfilled. Dora, Dick and I will be very glad to help out until you can get somebody with more experience. We sure would, ma'am. Well, Dora? Well, if these two are that willing, tell everybody the Argus will be out this week as usual. Well, good! Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Something's wrong with this type. Doesn't come out right. It isn't a type, it's a typeset. What do you mean? I set the type up forward and it comes out backwards. See? <laughs> That's right, it should. You set it up forward so it comes out backward. Now, if you set it up backwards, then it'll come out forward. Huh? Sure, turn it around to the mirror. Now, you see, Dick, the mirror is the paper. The mirror makes everything backwards. So you set the type up backwards, and it comes out forwards, which is right. Well, what do you know? Well, that makes it easy. All I have to do is set the type up in front of the mirror. It's a good idea. Go over and talk to Dora for a minute. Okay. Say, if you find time, look around here for a type stretcher, will you? A type stretcher? What do we use that for? Well, in case we run out of news, fill up the page, we just use a type stretcher. Fine, I'll get right after it. Good. How are we doing? Slow. But we're learning. Dora, tell me about the three men who were in your office here the other day. Why do you ask? Oh, curiosity, I guess. I see. Well, first there's Judge Barrett. He might have been governor except for one thing. Harris found out he'd made a phony political deal. The Argus printed the story. The judge sued us for libel and lost. Harris believed in printing the truth no matter who got hurt. Even men like Turner Shelton, the banker who holds the mortgage on this paper. One time he was set to make a fortune in a big railroad land grab. Our story stopped him. What about Bradford? Well, he was no different from the rest. In fact, he and Harris had a big argument just a couple of days ago. Just shortly before Harris went to Junction City. But it was merely an argument, nothing else. You're getting at something. What is it? Well, this fell out of your husband's pocket the day he was killed. What does it mean to you? Hmm. It's the way he made his notes for a story. I doubt if anybody else could make anything out of these figures, whatever they are. Like number one. 200 plus 600 equals 800. Number two is 300 delivered, 1,000, gain 700. Hey. See? Hey. All set.
maybe an outside job would suit you better. Oh, well, you know me. Yeah. So how would you like to be an inquiring reporter? <laughs> okay. I'll clean up this pie, then I'm going over to Junction City. I'm going to try and find out who Townley saw over there. Well, then I'll see you when you get back. Right. Meantime, try and pick up some news, will you? Yeah, and some clues, too. I'm sorry. Back to the original question, Mr. Parsons. Who do you know that have reason enough to kill Harris Townley? Well, lots of them would have reason enough. Newspaper editors, as a general rule, are not very popular, especially when they're good ones. And Harris Townley was one of the best. Oh, I'll buy that. Now, what do you know about Monroe Bradford? Well, I'd say Bradford's a model citizen. Every few months, he drives in seven or eight hundred head of cattle and sells them to me. No quibbling, he asks a fair price, and I buy them. What's nice man to do business with. What's his brand? Oh, there's three, actually. Three? Yeah. There they are, right here. Do you mind if I keep this? No, no, help yourself. You see, when Bradford bought the Woodville Ranch, he brought up the herds from two other ranches. He kept the brands for sentimental reasons. Sentimental reasons? Thank you very much, Mr. Parson. You've been a great help. I wish I could have been more, but it's like I told you. All he did was come in here and look at a couple of tally sheets and then left in a hurry to get married. Yeah, I know. Thanks again. Glad to have been some help. I found out later while I was gone that the rustlers had made another surprise raid. And as usual, it was successful. And they'd left no trace. My partner and I just took over the Argus. Oh. Uh, my name's West. Um, here's my press card. Scoop West. Star reporter. You must be Susan. Yes, I am. Your job must be very exciting. Oh, you know how it is. I'll bet you hear a lot of news over this counter, don't you? Well, the only news anyone's interested in now is who killed Harris Townley. Well, don't tell anyone. But the whole story will be in this week's Argus, under my byline. Really? Mm-hmm. You see, the range rider found some notes in the dead man's pocket. And no one could make any sense out of them. And then I figured them out, and I knew right away who the killer was. And not only that, I know why he was killed. I got the answer right here in my pocket. But who is it? Who tried to kill him? If I told you that, you wouldn't have to buy a paper. Oh, I think that's terrible. Build up my curiosity like that, and, and then just leave me hanging there. Sure is good coffee. Well... I'll be seeing you real soon now, Susan. Here's your money. And don't forget to buy an Argus. I won't, school. Scoop! Scoop! Scoop West! Your press card! Keep on walking, Scoop, or there'll be a big story for the Argus. Star reporter shot. Get on.
Suppose we use type like this, Mr. Shelton. It's dignified and nice. Well, you know more about that than I do, Dora. Whatever you say. All right. Howdy. Oh, you're back. Dora and I were just going over the bank's regular ad. If it were up to Mr. Shelton, he'd use the same one year after year. Well, all I want is an ad as good as the one that sold Bradford those three ranches. He must keep you pretty busy. Who? Bradford. With all the cattle he ships, he should be your biggest depositor. Why, on the contrary. Mr. Bradford's shipments are very small. 800 to 1,000 head, small. Now I know you're pulling my leg. Why, his ranch wouldn't even graze that many. Well, I must be getting back to the bank. Uh, do whatever you think best on that ad, Dora. I'll take care of it. Bye. What were you getting at? If he's right, Bradford's selling more cattle in Junction City than he's raising here. That's ridiculous. Maybe. Maybe not. I got just about half of a crazy idea. Where's Harris's notes? They're here somewhere on the desk. Oh. Where? Dick may have taken them. Dick, where'd he go? Out playing reporter. He left just before you did. Susan! Excuse me, Mrs. Townley. I thought I ought to bring this back. Oh, Susan Campbell, this is Range Rider. She runs the lunchroom. How do you do? What is it, dear? It's Scoop's press card. He left it in the lunchroom. Scoop? Uh, that's Dick. He said he had it all figured out. Who the murderer was, I mean. He did. Is he back yet? Where'd he go? Well, he rode out of town with those two men. Which way did he go? The South Road. Why do you ask? Tell you later. Tracking Dickie was not a new experience. Because of the new shoes Dickie had put on Lucky's front feet, a schoolboy could have followed his trail. Knowing Dickie would also mark his trail in some manner, I was not surprised to find a piece of lead type. Tell me, just what do you know? I was only kidding. Now, don't give us that stuff. Mac here heard what you told the girl. I was only trying to impress her, honest. He said he had the answer in his pocket. It's probably still there now. Maybe it is. Sit down, kid. This is our party, and you're just a guest. Just what do those figures mean? Look, I told you, I was only trying to impress the girl. They don't mean anything. Honest, they don't. Hey, what's that? Sounds like the horses are loose. You better go find out. Mac, you take a look. Hey, you cavallo! All right, reach. Blues, Dick. Thanks. Now, where's the notes? Hey, here. Well, I got the horses. Good. Now you won't have to walk back to jail. Revive your buddy. Bring him to this.
killed the editor, all right. That's why they wouldn't let me go, because I knew too much. You can't pin anything on me. Deputy, give me Hurley's gun. Yeah, got it right here. You might as well confess, Hurley, save everybody a lot of trouble. We know that a bullet from this 44 of yours killed editor Tommy. You're out of your mind. You know as well as I do he wasn't killed with a pistol, he was killed with a rifle. You can keep asking me questions from now till Christmas. It'll get you exactly nothing. Touche. When will the sheriff be back? Tomorrow, why? I got an idea. Huh? We've got some pretty good bait in that cell. I think we should use the power of the press. Yeah, right. Come on. I'll lock it up. Ah. Uh, maybe I better lock it up, huh? Hmm. On second thought, maybe you'd better. I changed the whole front page to your paper. I hope you don't mind. But what for? Well, he says he's going to use the power of the press. Get me three sheets of paper, Dick. Three? The entire circulation of this particular edition is three copies. Oh. And each one of us will deliver a copy in person. You get it? Yes. But how did you? Let's go to press. Dora thought you might be interested in what she's done with the Argus. Oh, fine. Thanks, son. I thought you'd be interested, Judge, so I brought this copy over personally. Well, thanks. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> oh, hello, Dora. Do you have the proof of my ad? Better than that, Mr. Shelton. Here's a copy of the whole paper. Good. Save myself a penny. Excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Oh, no. No. You understand my position. Naturally, I want the fee, but I can't become involved. People might not understand my motives. Yeah, but what about me? I have a reputation, too, you know. With you, it's strictly business. Well, I'll try, but only as a favor to you. Thanks, and please don't use my name. Yeah. Well, Dick, three men have had a look at our bait. I wonder which one's gonna bite. A judge. Sure would have fooled me. Me too. Let's go. I demand the right to talk to the prisoner. You can't refuse him legal counsel. I'll take it easy, Judge. Why do you have to talk to him? I want to get his signature on this document for the purpose of arranging bail. Bail on a murder charge? Who'd go bail for him? Well, that I can't tell you. Well, I guess it's all right. Can't see that it'll do any harm. Now, Hurley. I really don't approve of this, but I can... All right. I'll open up in a hurry, Sheriff. But the judge gets it, and you too. Now, Judge, if you don't mind, you'll help me get out of here. Don't shoot her. He'll kill the judge. Well, you'll never get away with it, Judge. Me? Get away? What are you talking about? Only three men knew about those fake newspaper headlines. And we knew the man that'd have to keep Hurley's mouth shut would show up here in jail. So you did use me as bait, huh? That's right. Pretty smart. But not quite smart enough. It just didn't work. Did you kick me? Well, if it isn't Bradford, all right, turn around and go back to town. I hope we're going to make more than three copies this time. <laughs> Don't worry. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. I haven't read your story yet, but 
I'd like to know just why exactly that Bradford wanted Townley killed. Because Townley went to Junction City and found out that Bradford was the key to the whole situation. But how? Well, Bradford's ranch here was only a front. You see, his main operation was peddling stolen cattle for rustlers like Hurley. And Townley had all the figures in his notes. But how could he get away with a thing like that? You have to remember, he had three registered brands. He could take almost any rancher's brand, turn it around to look like one of his. And then he'd drive his cattle to Junction City, and on the way, the rustlers would add several hundred to his herd. Pretty ingenious, I'd say. No wonder he had Harris killed. Well, he only made one mistake. He should have killed the Argus, too. After all, it was your newspaper that put him in jail. Well, there's still one thing that I want to know. Yeah, what's that? Well, what did you ever want with a type stretcher? Oh, he was kidding you, Dick. A type stretcher is a newspaper myth. Like a mirage. Yeah? Then what do you suppose made this? <laughs> enjoyed The Range Riders starring Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones and remember it's brought to you free here on the internet by westernsontheweb.com hundreds of free family friendly western TV shows and movies and also I'd like to add this Dick Jones is in this Dick Jones was all over Hollywood back in the heyday of Hollywood he was in movies with James Stewart and with Errol Flynn with Randolph Scott John Wayne Dick Jones was everywhere, all over the place when he was a boy in Hollywood. Thanks again. I'm Bob Terry. Appreciate you joining us. We hope to see you get on down the trail. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>